the one change that Space Engineers needs to make it perfect. I love Space Engineers, it's one of my favourite games of all time and when I make criticism of it, it's because I love the game and I want to see it get better. With that in mind, this video is going to be about a feature that I'd really like to get reworked and it being reworked would fix a lot of the issues I think myself and other people have about the game. So, what is it? In a previous video I discussed the economy system. One of the conclusions of that video is that a lot of people weren't using the economy system and the reason we thought is because it wasn't really worth it. And that isn't an issue with the economy system because the economy system works fine. That's an issue with progression. Now, when I'm talking about progression, I don't mean the progression system where you place down blocks and you unlock more blocks. I'm specifically talking about how you progress through the game, getting from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. So we're going to look at how progression works in Space Engineers and I'm going to compare it to a couple of similar games to see how they're doing progression systems differently and how Space Engineers could benefit to make changes based on what those games are already doing. So without further ado, let's begin. Now progression in most games is generally goal orientated. So you have a goal and that there are several steps you need to complete before you can get to that goal. For Space Engineers, I'm going to break this down into two categories, which is pre-space and post-space. Because most people when playing Space Engineers will start on the Earth-like planet and one of the big goals for them will be getting to space. So, in order to get to space, what do you need? So you need a source of iron, nickel and silicon and cobalt ore. Now three of those ores, iron, nickel and silicon, can all be got from stone. But the only ore you actually need at the start of the game is cobalt. Cobalt is required for metal grids, which is required for thrusters and a number of the blocks that are needed on large ships. Silver is only used in medical components and gravity components, so you don't need that to escape the planet. And gold is only used in gravity components and superconductors, which again, you don't really need to escape the planet. Platinum is only found on moons and in space, so not on planets, but platinum is only used to build iron thrusters, which are only used usable in space, and uranium is only found in space, but it's just an endgame power source for you to use once you get to space. So, if we're measuring progression by these things, once you have a source of cobalt, that's it, you can get to space. And once you're in space, the only things for you to look for are platinum and uranium, as uranium allows you to build better power sources, and platinum helps you build thrusters that are only used in space. And I think this is where the inherent problem lies, is that in order to get to space, you need to use hydrogen thrusters. And iron thrusters aren't actually better than hydrogen thrusters. Sure, they don't use hydrogen, which I guess is a bonus, but you can get ice in space as well. It's not like ice is only available on the surface of planets. So you could, in theory, keep using your hydrogen thrusters once you get to space. Another problem is that the only thing to do once you get to space is build a bigger ship, but there's nothing to really use that ship for. Sure, you can use it to mine more ores to build bigger ships, but you're still just building ships. There's nothing to use those ships against. Another problem is as well is there's no reason to go to the other planets. You can build a jump drive to get to these other planets, but there's nothing on them, there's nothing special. In fact, there's basically nothing there aside from just having a nice look around. So once you get Cobalt Ore, you have access to everything the game has to offer, and aside from building, it doesn't really have anything. Another thing to mention as well is that Space Engineers doesn't really get that much difficult as you go along. If you have wards and aliens turned on, they can attack your base, but as soon as you get a ship, they don't really pose a problem anymore. And whilst there are AI ships that fly around in the game, unless you actively go out to fight them, they're never really a problem. I wanted to bring this up as is something we'll be comparing to the other two games I have on this list, but Space Engineers doesn't really have a difficulty curve, it has kind of a difficulty line. Now that's the basic gist of Space Engineers' progression, so now let's go on to the first game we're going to compare it to, a game that I'm pretty sure every one of you will have played, Minecraft. Minecraft's progression operates on ores similar to Space Engineers. You start by mining wood and turning wood into tools, and you mine stone and turn the stone into tools, and using the stone you can then build a furnace to smelt down iron into ingots, which you can then use to build tools, and then finally get to diamonds, which are the end game equipment. But it doesn't end there, quite literally. Even though diamond tools are technically the end game item, you can still upgrade your tools and armor using enchantments, and you can also brew potions to improve the player. Once you have diamonds as well, you can unlock access to another dimension, the nether, which has a whole bunch of other stuff to find. My point being, think about how much more content the nether has compared to another planet in Space Engineers. Now, as you go along, Minecraft doesn't really get more difficult because Minecraft starts out, I don't want to say pretty hard, but it's harder at the beginning than it is at the end. As you get better equipment like bows, armor, swords, dealing with the enemies in the game becomes easier. However, once you get to the nether, the power of enemies scales up again. The nether has three main enemies that are more difficult than the enemies you've been facing previously, those being the wither skeleton, blazes, and ghasts. I wanted to bring up the Wither Skeletons specifically because killing Wither Skeletons gives you Wither Skulls and using Wither Skulls you can build the first boss in Minecraft, that being the Wither. Now, since I last played Minecraft, there were only two bosses in the game and I'm pretty sure they've added a couple more since then. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to consider the Wither the first boss of the game. So you couldn't beat the Wither at the beginning of the game. Even with stone tools, you can build basically every mob in the game. The Wither requires you to have these potions and enchantments and all this stuff to beat it. Now, there isn't necessarily a progression reward for beating the Wither, but as we said earlier, lots of games are about reaching goals and beating the Wither as a goal to get towards. 
The next and technically final boss in Minecraft is the Ender Dragon. And even if it's not where you stop playing, the end is considered the end of the game, even though there is stuff after it, like a post game. Now getting to the Ender Dragon is very annoying rather than difficult as you have to kill loads of Endermen, get Ender Eyes and then fly across a million miles across the ocean to get there. Even in creative, as you can see in this clip here, it took me forever to find one of these portals. You fight and kill the dragon, get the credits and there you go, you've beaten the game. Now, like I said, there is stuff after this. I know they've added a whole bunch of extra stuff to the Nether and the End now since I stopped playing, but I basically got the point across. Minecraft's progression isn't just linear, it kind of branches out as the game goes along and the game starts out difficult and slowly gets easier as you get better equipment and then the game becomes more challenging as you start to get the best equipment in the game. It also has bosses which serve as landmarks to progress, having a literal end game boss for you to fight. Now the next game I wanted to cover is Ark. Ark isn't a game I know a lot about, I know the basics of it, I know how to play the game. However, I thought it was a good example to bring up as Ark is very similar and different to Minecraft at the same way. So the weird thing about Ark is whilst being kind of a sandboxy survival game, it has like a main quest to complete. So before I cover what this main kind of quest is, I wanted to cover the progression because I think progression in Ark is very interesting. Now, whilst I don't necessarily think it's applicable to space engineers, in Ark you level up as you do things. And once you gain a level, you can improve some of your attributes. As you can see here, I improved my carry weight, but as you can see, there's lots of other stats for you to upgrade. However, the most interesting part relative to space engineers is the engram system. So once you level up, you get a certain number of engram points that you can use to buy effectively blueprints for crafting. Now, these include tools, buildable blocks, saddles, and a whole bunch of other things I've probably never experienced because I've never got that far in art. Now, I don't think the system could be lifted one-to-one -to, -one to Space Engineers, but I think we'll discuss that later on in the video. One of the things about Ark as well is that on a lot of them actually start on the coast, and as you go deeper into the coast, the game gets more difficult, with harder creatures to fight as you go deeper in. As the player levels up as well, you're able to go deeper into the island, and as you go deeper into the island, you're able to find better creatures to tame. So effectively, the player gets better, the equipment the player can build gets better, and the creatures you're allowed to recruit get better as well. However, as as you go deeper into the island, the game also gets more difficult. So it's like a three-tiered progression system. Now, at least the first island has three bosses for you to beat. Now, I don't have any gameplay footage of this. I was, like I said, I haven't played a lot of art. Just imagine a big nanotech saber-toothed tiger fighting me and 12 T-Rexes. And also I have an assault rifle and a laser sword. Now, there are three of these bosses for you to beat. And once you beat all of them, you get to fight the final boss. And once you beat that final boss, you quote unquote, escape the arc. So let's go back and look at how these two games handle progression and compare them to Space Engineers. Whilst we're on the subject of progression, I've nearly hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube and I have a very special video planned for when we get there. Let's just say it involves a lot of railguns, perhaps even 10,000 of them. So if you want to see that video and want to help us reach that goal, please click the subscribe button below. So, how could Space Engineers learn from these two games? Well, for starters, I think from beginning to end, progression probably needs a rework. But I don't necessarily know how you do that. And I don't want to suggest a way to do it because I don't want to pretend I know more than game developers. I'm just an idiot online who is just making suggestions. I think we definitely need progression once we get to space that isn't just ion thrusters because ion thrusters are just worse hydrogen thrusters at the end of the day. I think we need something on each of those planets to go and find, whether that be hostile encounters or new resources or whatever. I think we definitely need a reason to go to these planets. Otherwise, they're not really that different from Earth. It's not as simple as just removing certain ores from certain planets. I know there are mods that remove all the ores past cobalt from the Earth-like planet to force you to go to those planets and get them. Some of the blocks you get are so essential. Like to get to other planets in vanilla, you need to have a jump drive which requires gold which basically means you need all of the ores to get to the other planets i think if anything if you're going to add extra stuff to the game you need new ores added to each of the planets to add new stuff for you to get i mentioned in my economy video say there were some special type of crystals on pertan that you could get and using those crystals you could build laser weapons now i don't really want laser weapons but like i said i don't really have a suggestion of what they should add to the progression just that it needs something for you to do once you get there one of the things Minecraft does really well is that the world is populated full of stuff for you to find and explore, even though the game is randomly generated, and I think that's something space engineers could also benefit from as well. Whilst there are encounters in the game, I don't think in all my hours of playing the game I've ever encountered one, so an improvement to that system would be good. Even if it was just something as simple like abandoned bases or stations like Minecraft has, something like that would make the world feel much more alive than it currently is. I wanted to quickly bring up engrams from Ark. Now, whilst I don't necessarily think we need exactly the same system, I think having blocks locked away from the player would be a good idea. The way progression works in the current game, where if you place a block, you unlock the next one, it's good for a starting player. But for players that are experienced, it doesn't really add any challenge as you need a lot of those blocks to get to space anyway. I think if we'd lock down the game, just you start with all the blocks you need to get to space. And then there was some sign of system to unlock the new blocks, whether that be blueprints or whatever. Maybe if you wanted some super advanced thruster, however that would work. Maybe it was powered by antimatter or something and you had to produce antimatter you'd need to find some sort of blueprint for the antimatter reactor or antimatter thruster or maybe you could buy the blueprints using the economy system furthermore tying it into the progression of the game or alternatively we could just do it the same way minecraft does it where you cannot build the item without the resource again it's one of those things where a game developer would know better how to implement these things than i would 
Now, I thought about this for a long time, and stat improvements from Ark are interesting as the player gets more powerful as the game progresses, but I don't know if I necessarily want that with Space Engineers. There's kind of an emphasis on not using your player character in Space Engineers, instead of using ships and bases to do things for you. Improving the player character's carry capacity or welding speed, I feel like would detract from that. What would be the reason of using a grid to weld things up if you could do it much easier and faster with just your hand welder? We kind of have that problem in the game currently where the build planner is much easier to use in the hand than it is to use in the ship. That welding by hand is kind of easier in a lot of circumstances than actually using the ship is. I think Space Engineers definitely need some more difficult areas to enter. Ark is a really good way of doing this, with the game getting more difficult as you enter further into the island. That's such a good way to demonstrate progression is that as you get further into the island, the game gets more difficult. I think an easy way of doing this with Space Engineers is that the Earth-like planet is very, should we say easy, it's not very difficult. Unless you leave the planet, there's more hostiles come and attack you. Or if you have a bigger base, more hostiles come and attack you. In Ark, I didn't really mention it at the time, but there are kind of like spiders' nests and stuff like that. Maybe Space Engineers could benefit from having AI bases that are just out there that spawn in the ships and that if you destroyed that base it would stop the AIs coming after you. So it'd be an incentive to attack the base but also the base would be this difficult fortress for you to kind of overcome. Another way you could do is just have more hostile environments. Currently all the planets have around the same amount of gravity either having much lower or the alien planet has, I think has 1.1 or 1.2 gravity. I think actually a better example is that Pertam has a really thin atmosphere so you can't go very high with atmospheric thrusters. I think if we overhauled the system so we had more environmental hazards for example maybe the weather was much more severe on a certain planet and it actually had an effect to so say a dust storm was really bad and you couldn't see at all on the planet it would so slowly degrade the blocks on your ship over time however as a bonus for going to this really hostile planet you had much better ores there so you need that better ship in order to get there you kind of double gatekeep so you need to have the ship good enough to get into that hostile environment in order to get an ore which allows you to then progress to the next part of the game the biggest thing i think especially you could learn from both of these games is bosses and end game I mentioned this before and a lot of people were turned off of the idea of having an endgame in Space Engineers and I don't really see why. Look, an easy example is in Minecraft, whilst it has an endgame, it's not actually the end of the game. It would be the same principle for any survival sandbox game. The game has an endgame, it's not necessarily the end. Space Engineers would massively benefit from having an end goal to reach. I thought about this in the past and I think the best way of doing it would to have some kind of jump gate be the end of the game and the game's progression has worked around you trying to escape the solar system you're in and whilst you have a jump drive it's not powerful enough to leave the system you're in you need to travel through this jump gate and the entire game's progression is finding where this jump gate is. Getting a security in the gate is the end of the game and you'd have to fight some final boss or whatever. Effectively the game is over because you've quote unquote won. The game keeps going, you don't have to leave. It is just that now you have the means to leave. Again, I'm sure this is something that game developers would have a lot more insight into of how you do it, but I think bosses would definitely be a thing, whether there's a boss that guards a certain area, or maybe the boss is just a base that you have to take over and stuff like that. Bosses are an important landmark of progression, and it would give you a reason to build those bigger, more powerful ships to use against the bosses. Now, I've mentioned all these things are improvements I'd like to see to the game, but adding this stuff isn't an easy task. Minecraft has a load of stuff in it. But the thing is, is that Minecraft is the best selling game of all time. It's owned by one of the biggest companies in the world. And whilst it has been in development for about as long as Space Engineers, the team that works on it is a lot bigger. To go with this, this isn't as simple as just adding stuff to the game. In order to do this, Keen would have to rework the entire progression of the game and make sure it's balanced. Let's say, for example, we changed the game so you only started with iron, nickel and silicon on Earth. So there was no cobalt anymore. You didn't have to rework work their game to either not include metal grids or that metal grids don't require cobalt anymore. If we didn't go that route and we kept the current progression of the way it is and added more progression on the end, that means we have to have all of those new things added, all of those new models created, all of those new sounds, etc, etc. And, and adding enough stuff to each planet to make it worth going there and it take a lot of time. In many of their live streams, Keen have spoke about reworking progression. They haven't really gone into any details on it. They've said it is something they're interested in looking in. They've also spoke about reworking encounters and the end game of Space Engineers. So a lot of the stuff I have mentioned is on their radar. It's just that they're adding other stuff at the moment. For example, they're working on grid AI at the moment. And with grid AI comes better encounters, potential for bosses. And then if they've got bosses, we've got the end game. So once grid AI is added, I imagine encounters will get improved anyway. So there'll be more difficulty in the game. So basically, Keen is aware of a lot of this stuff and is probably planning it or working on it at this very moment. But let's say hypothetically they're not. Maybe if this video gets enough likes, Keen will see it and they'll take some of these suggestions I've made into consideration. And are there any other changes you guys would like to see as well? Leave a comment below about any changes you'd like to see, whether it be about progression or something else. And hopefully, fingers crossed, Keen will see it and take it into consideration. Do you know, it would be typical that we found diamond ore before we found any iron ore. We should just become a Minecraft channel. If I can find diamonds in like five minutes, like what chance does anyone else have?